Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete episode 45 of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival series. The previous episode was a bit more on the relaxed side. We finally saw the toxic fallout disappear and we had no raids or other catastrophes, and that allowed us to substantially upgrade our hydroponics farm. Near the end of the episode, we also captured a crash-landed survivor with rather intriguing stats, and as you can see, the guy is still recovering in the only warm room we have. Now today we start things off with the usual sculpting order for Giraffe. In the last episode she has made very good progress in the art department, and for the next few sculptures we're also switching her over to Marble, which is statistics-wise the most beautiful stone type in the game. Cobra meanwhile is making a few more sandstone blocks. We have used quite a lot of them extending our deadfall traps, and who knows when we will have to replace those, so as always it's better to be prepared. Now jumping over to Antonio, we can see a bit of a mining operation going on, as we have a brand new room to dig out. I already talked about this briefly in the last episode, I think, because today we're building ourselves a small hospital. Very fittingly, we also have Cambia researching the hospital bed at the moment, and once that research project is completed we can start constructing one, and then Dr. Giraffe will be able to start working on people. Now the hospital floor here will be made of sterile tiles. I don't think I have to explain much why having a clean environment is helpful here, because of course it lowers the risk of infections and it also increases the success chance of surgeries. While Antonio continues working, Giraffe has also finished her first sculpture of the episode, and once again Antonio is the subject. After the facial hair of Antonio, we now have the leg hair of Antonio. Looks like Antonio is either a very hairy dude, or Giraffe simply has a strange fascination with body hair in general. Be that as it may, she can now immediately begin with sculpture number 2, before she then heads off to bed shortly after. And while she does, we are also being informed that our patient has apparently survived the worst. He is no longer incapable of walking, but don't forget he is our prisoner, so he will remain locked in here at least until our hospital is finished. Speaking of which, just in that moment, Cambia finishes research off the hospital bed, and because we don't want to leave anything up to chance, we will now research the vitals monitor next. That is a small appliance that can be placed next to a hospital bed, and in similar fashion to the tool cabinet, the dresser or the end table, it offers a small increase in surgery success chance. However, that project will take a while, and it is not essential to our hospital, so before Cambia gets settled in at the research bench again, we'll have him help out with the flooring. Shortly after then, Cobra awakes to join the party, and late in the evening of this third day of summer, the flooring job is completed. Now we can put down the blueprints for a hospital bed and a lamp, and that lamp is in fact very important, because just like cleanliness, light will of course also have an effect on how successful a surgery will be. To construct all of that, we need a bit more steel though, but luckily our huskies have been busy, and Giraffe should quickly be able to smelt us all the necessary materials. In the meantime, Cobra is harvesting some rice, but because the farm is currently officially marked as a prison, he will not be able to haul any of it back. The rice is marked as reserved for prisoners, but there is an easy way around that. We can simply remove the for prisoner status on the sleeping spot, and that allows us to haul the majority of the harvest back to the base. While we do that, the psychic sooth then also comes to an end, and with that, Cambia, Cobra and Antonio all lose a nice plus 16 mood bonus. With the hauling completed, we can now mark the sleeping spot for prisoners again, that way our prisoner will return there shortly to rest and heal up. At this point, we can now also begin constructing our hospital equipment, and that includes some conduits to give the light some power. Up next then, Cobra can construct the hospital bed, and a few seconds later it's finished and of good quality. Now one slight problem, because the room is inside of our mountain base, it is pretty damn cold in there. And our prisoner is unfortunately not well equipped for those temperatures, so Cambia will quickly craft him a parka. Putting a heater inside of the hospital is sadly not an option, otherwise we would have a pretty high risk of infestation there. With the parka finished, we can then put a stockpile down and have Cambia haul the thing over there, and then we'll relocate our prisoner shortly as well. Before we do that, however, we will have Cobra take care of some cooking. Yes, we haven't done that for quite a while, but as you can see, our huskies have run out of food. 
We also only have one human corpse left in storage, but more than enough meat and rice to prepare some pemmican. And that is exactly what Cobra will now do for a while, before he and Giraffe can haul a few big pals over to the Huskies. Just in that moment we also have our first event of the episode, and unfortunately it's not a good one. A psychic ship has landed on the ice sheet, and the thing is now giving all of our colonists a nice minus 12 mood penalty. That is of course something we cannot tolerate, so let's fire up the mortar. The first shot is an immediate success and we can see we have two lances, a scyther and a centipede here, definitely a group that we should be able to handle easily. The next shot then makes it even easier by instantly killing one of the lances, and believe it or not, shot number 3 also finds its target. That should be enough for the remaining mechanoids to make their way over to us, while we can have Cobra continue firing for a short while longer. Unfortunately, the next shot goes wide, but at that point two of the mechanoids have already reached our defenses, and unsurprisingly, they do not last long. As you can see though, the stone traps are not as efficient as the steel traps, still they do a fine job of taking out the enemies. The next mortar shot then also once again hits, and with that the ship's destruction is just around the corner. One thing still standing in our way though, that is the centipede, and while we have more than enough traps for it, I would prefer not to waste them here. Instead, I think with four colonists and three turrets, we should be able to take out the centipede on our own, so let's prepare for that. We will have Cambia open up all of our doors, Cobra can activate the turrets, while Giraffe switches out her incendiary launcher for some EMP grenades. Up next we'll have everyone take positions, but we'll make sure that our colonists are not able to open fire for now, instead we'll wait and let the turrets go first. That way we will make sure that the centipede leaves our defenses entirely, otherwise it might happen that it stops just inside of the doorway with our turrets unable to hit it. And here we are, the turrets have opened fire, so time to engage with our colonists as well. And while the enemy is busy with the turrets, we'll have Giraffe haul an EMP grenade over there, and that immediately finds its target and stuns the enemy. That also means that Giraffe can now retreat and we can move Antonio up, and so let's see now if our combined firepower is enough to take the enemy down quickly. Right, that went about as well as we could have hoped for. The stun lasted long enough for the centipede to be able to fire exactly once during the entire firefight, and so we get the kill without wasting any traps and most importantly also without suffering any injuries in the process. Then as we start the cleanup process, we immediately have the next event as a group of two thrombos wanders onto the ice sheet. And of course, I could not let this opportunity pass us by. We have four colonists now and that should be enough to hunt them down, provided of course we don't do anything stupid. Since EMP grenades are of course pretty much useless against animals, we will also have giraffe switch back to the incendiary launcher, and then we can have our entire colony march out. Now we'll make sure to put some distance between us and the animals here, and then we'll start firing with only one single colonist. That maximizes the chances of hitting only one animal, which in turn also makes it a bit more likely that only one of them attacks us. And as you can see, that works pretty nicely here. We have successfully split the group, one thrombo has gone manhunter while the other one is staying behind. And with only one thrombo against us, we can send our two night owls, Cobra and Giraffe, back home. They have earned their rest, while Cambia and Antonio can continue hunting. The thrombo is already slowed down, and at this point we want to split up our hunting group. And as we do, we can see the thrombo has locked in on Antonio. And so we can now use Antonio to lead the thrombo in a nice circle around Cambia, who can simply fire volley after volley with the charge rifle. And unsurprisingly, it doesn't take long for the animal to fall. 
Cambia can now haul the corpse back to the base while Antonio takes care of the psychic ship, which is almost destroyed already and should therefore not require much work. As you can see, mood is also a bit of an issue at the moment, which is why we will not keep our colonists away from the base any longer, and so the second thrombo here will get away. Still, one is already a pretty nice trophy, and the remains from the mechanoids and the psychic ship should stock up our supplies as well. Back inside of the base now, it's time to turn on the coolers again. Because it is summer, temperatures are starting to reach dangerous levels in regards to infestations, and from past experience, our two coolers should be enough to keep the base below the temperature threshold. With that taken care of, we can now also relocate our prisoner. After all, we have just constructed a brand new hospital, and that should speed up his healing process significantly. However, I'm afraid I have to report that even after a few hours inside of his new home, our prisoner here would still refuse to wear the parka that we crafted specifically for him. Hypothermia had already kicked in by this point, and even making him leave the bed, removing the stockpile, forbidding and unforbidding the parka would not change anything, so in the end I was left with the simple choice of letting him freeze to death or move him back to the farm. And even though many of your comments on the last episode suggested interesting experiments, I am not ready to watch this guy die just yet. I absolutely think that our hospital will be the place for some very cruel operations, however I'm not quite sure that this is the guy I want to start with. Yes, his skills and traits are nothing extraordinary, but they could still prove to be very helpful around the colony, and over the course of the last 44 episodes, you know that I have not said those words often. So my plan for the moment is to keep him around and to start the recruiting process. That will likely take a while, but should ultimately succeed. And if it doesn't or he decides to cause trouble, well, then he might begin figuring out which one of his kidneys he would like to keep. Now the rest of the day and the following night pass by without any major incidents, and so we return to the base in the early morning hours, with Giraffe disassembling the mechanoid corpses we made barely 24 hours ago. In the meantime, Cobra is smelting more steel and Antonio has begun putting the stone traps back up, while Cambia starts his very first recruitment session. It is no success, however, and actually that is the only possible result here, because our prisoner still has what is called resistance. Only when that resistance has been brought down to zero can we actually start recruiting, so the next few sessions here will work purely on reducing resistance. Now while we have Giraffe run out onto the ice sheet to grab the last remaining mechanoid corpse, Antonio was busy in the hydroponics farm, where we can now once again haul a bunch of rice back to the storage room. Speaking of food, if you take a look at our nutrient paste dispenser, then you can see that our meat reserves have pretty much run out at the moment, so we will have Cobra do some slaughtering now. No human corpses today, but husky puppies and the occasional thrombo as well, and if we just jump ahead a few hours here, I would say meat should not be an issue for at least the next few months. To improve our situation even further, the volcanic ash has also settled now, so the sun can finally break through and return to the ice sheet, however, admittedly, we were doing just fine without it. More good news then, our prisoner has fully healed at this point, so even the sleeping spot inside of the hydroponics farm eventually served its purpose. And more good news on the meat front as well, as with our next event, Randy sends us a herd of Megasloth. Now, I'm not quite sure if we actually had some of these before in this playthrough. Suffice it to say that they are huge creatures with a pretty hefty amount of meat on them, and they also produce the warmest wool in the game, however, only if you can tame them. From what you can see on screen right now, you might be able to guess that this is not the plan. Instead, we will once again send Cambia and Antonio out for a quick hunting session. There are a few more animals here compared to the Thrombo group earlier, but they are all far less sturdy and should not pose too much of a threat. Still, they are by no means easy to take down. They can take quite a few hits, and if they retaliate, a quick retreat might be the best option. Once again at this point, we will split up the group, and once again it is Antonio who is being followed. So same tactics as before, Antonio will be the bait, and Cambia will be the careful shooter. Thank you. 
That's the first animal down, and just at that moment we also have a solar flare strike the ice sheet. And considering how we have a huge hydroponics farm running at the moment, this could certainly be problematic. However, there is also not really much that we could do about it, and to be honest, we just brought in a sizable rice harvest, so losing some crops here might be a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. And for that reason, we will simply continue hunting, and it also does not take long until the second animal goes down. Three more remain, and they are on the run, however, you can't really outrun bullets, something these three will learn very quickly. One down, two more to go, and luckily Cambia and Antonio are moving a bit faster than them, so it doesn't take them long to catch up and down animal number four. The last remaining Mega Sloth is then caught just before it can exit the map, and after a few volleys it goes down as well, and with that all five animals can now be hauled back to the corpse storage room. While we're out here, we will also have Cambia disassemble a ship chunk here, that will add a bit of steel and components to our reserves, and you can never have enough of those. Later that day then, with the majority of our population taking care of various hauling jobs, the solar flare comes to an end, and so luckily our crops all survive and we can even feed our colonists some delicious nutrient paste again. And here you can see it, with Cambia and Antonio hauling rice and potatoes, our plants might have been damaged a bit, but they are all still green and growing. Our food storage room meanwhile is filling up quickly, but I would say there are much bigger problems to have. In the evening then, the after effects of a lack of food get to Antonio, who despite only being barely below the threshold, suffers a mental break. Thankfully, it's nothing crazy, he's just wandering around for a while, but as you can see, with him already being pretty hungry, food might once again become an issue for him soon. For the moment though, we'll simply let him do his thing and continue as usual. Randy also rewards us shortly after with a granite meteorite, nothing we desperately need at the moment, but granite is a solid building material, so we will keep the location in mind. A few hours later, Antonio is still wandering and he is officially once again starving, however, I'm confident that he will phase out of it before that becomes a serious problem. Cobra, meanwhile, is doing some very good work around the defenses, even though the stone traps take a while to put up, more than half of them are already replaced. Shortly after noon then, we get the first quest of the episode, and this one looks moderately interesting, I would say. Fighting off five enemies should be doable if we send two or three of our own, and the rewards are definitely intriguing. Now, of course, we just build ourselves a hospital bed, but a masterwork version would be fantastic to have, because it puts us in the best possible position to perform even difficult operations. The plate armor then, well, that's a bit of a mixed bag. I think we would probably end up selling it again. Yes, it offers fantastic protection, especially against blunt weapons, but it's also pretty clunky and not as good at stopping bullets. Still, this might very well be worth the trip and we have 27 days to think about it. And thinking about it, that is now going to be your job. Because this is where we make the cut in today's episode. But before you leave, I would like to know what you think about the mission that we just received. Do you think the risks and the rewards are worth giving it a try, or do you think we should stick to the base and focus on improving the home front? So as always, let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments below, and in the next episode we'll then see what the rest of summer has in store for our small ice sheet colony. For today, let's wrap things up right here. If you enjoyed the episode, then I would of course be happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel, then you can either subscribe if you haven't done so already, or you can also support the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.